Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hey, this is Tammy Passer, and I'm really excited to introduce today's guest, Sean Mark Byrne. He is the author of the book, The Heart Voice Connection, How to Infuse Your Message with Real Emotion, known as the Voice Master. He's also an international professional speaker and singer-songwriter. He's the voiceover coach of the animated series, The Octonauts which airs on the Disney Channel. He empowers people to project, command confidence, engage their audiences, and connect their hearts to their voices, creating deeper emotional connections with every conversation, generating harmony in their communications, and more money in their respective businesses. He created a series of workshops that have made him one of New York's top voiceover coaches. He's spoken on professional stages in Canada, Dubai, Cairo, Bahrain, and all over the United States. He's voice trained international public speakers from more than 30 different countries. He's also narrated some fabulous audiobooks. So, Jean Marc, tell me more about those audiobooks. Yes, and first of all, thank you for that wonderful introduction. And yeah, so those audiobooks, one was for Negocios, for Juno Diaz, who won the Pulitzer Prize and the MacArthur Genius Grant, which is the Spanish version of his book, Drown, which you may know. And the other one was for the Nobel Literature Prize winner, Mario Vargas Llosa, La Fiesta del Chivo. What does La Fiesta del Chivo mean in English? It means the party of the goat. <laughs> oh, wow. That is really interesting. Well, thank you so much for uh, um, saying that because obviously I don't speak Spanish and there's such a beautiful flow to the words that I was a little bit hesitant <laughs> to attempt that. So, Jean Marc, I've had the privilege and pleasure of actually meeting you in person. So I'm really happy to say that I feel like we do have a little bit of a heart connection. Tell me more about your why. Why do you do what you do? I've always felt that I've been meant for more. That whatever box that society has put together that what you're supposed to be doing. Like I, I grew up in Dominican Republic where you either grew up to be an architect, a doctor, a lawyer, a businessman, but not an artist. That's not too, it's too risky. So for me, I see a box and I want to break it. <laughs> <laughs> so I've always felt that I had this need to break out of the box, to tap into this gift that I, that I have this innate gift of expressing myself through my voice, through my music, through my acting, and to create a positive impact in the world. So what would you say as you break out of this box, what is your big message for everyone today? My big message is to always come from a place of love. When you speak from the heart, there is no space for judgment. Judgment is all in the head. And when you can have a conversation, a heartfelt conversation, and to really understand what that means, that you're opening your heart, and by doing so, you're opening up the space to get out of judgment and to receive people as they are, without preconceptions or prejudices that you also open yourself up to be received by others just as you are. And in doing so, we create this harmony in the way that we communicate with each other. So when you wrote the book, The Heart Voice Connection, How to Infuse Your Message with Real Emotion, 
what was the big mission behind that book? Well, it's interesting because it's been an evolution. When I first started writing the book, it, it was an ebook, and it was the title was "Power Up Your Voice," and it was very technical. And <laughs> the way that I even came up with with the title, it was very organic. So last year, I was in, invited to be a speaker at the International Speakers Forum in Dubai. And when I went there, I went there as the voice trainer. I was very technical about what I spoke about. This is how you place your voice so that you sound confident and powerful and feel powerful and command presence on stage. So it was all very technical, very much in the head. And then I had one of the other speakers approach me, and he's become a good friend of mine. His name is Christian Semlish. And he said, you are not just about the voice, are you? You connect people's hearts to their voices. And that just blew my mind because that became the core of my message. And it became the inspiration for the title of my book, The Heart Voice Connection. Wow, I, I've got chills. <laughs> yes, and so did I at the moment. It was amazing. It blew my mind because the more that I delved into my heart, the more. I got to understand that I opened myself up to different possibilities, different opportunities, that with every conversation that I was having from that moment on, it, they became so much deeper. Like right away, I noticed people that I had just met were opening up to me about childhood traumas. And I was like, oh, my God, did this person just tell me that? <laughs> wow. And yeah, so I was wearing my heart on my sleeve and I and I keep doing that and one of the things that I've encountered is that I found I discovered that my purpose in life and in, in delving deeper into my heart that by connecting people's hearts to their voices I was touching on some something much bigger than I that I, I started discovering all these things about myself and how I could create an even bigger and more positive impact in the world. That as I delve deeper into my heart, I also got to understand that I am clairsentient, that I am an empath, that I literally feel, I perceive people's emotions. And I got to understand that there were all these different parts of me, the singer-songwriter, the writer, the voiceover talent, the actor, the producer, and until recently, I thought that all those different elements, all these different parts of me needed to be compartmentalized. But then I got to understand it's all part of me. It's all one. It's all related. And it all goes back to my voice and the different ways that I express my voice. For me, the voice goes beyond just the sound. It's a form of expression, whether in the, the sound, the tonality, and also the emotion behind the sound. And for me as a writer as well, I also see it as how, what is your voice in music? What, what is your voice in written form? And these are all different forms of expression. And because of the gift that I have that I can perceive people's emotions, I can infuse that emotion into whatever form that I decide to express myself and also show others how to do that. Well, I know, again, I'm lucky enough that I met you, and you do, you do have this embodiment of love, and I can understand why people would instantly start pouring their heart out to you because you do <laughs> accept people in a very non judgmental way, and even people the the thing about voice or voices people are starving to have their voices heard to be seen to be felt even though we have all of this social media and we're more connected than ever around the world people are still so lonely and they want to be heard and and I know that's one of your true gifts is that so tell me more about 
who you help and, and how you help them? So I specialize in showing public speakers, serious actors, and heart-centered entrepreneurs how to find their voice so they can save it from strain, they can speak with ease, radiate more confidence, and evoke real emotion with every conversation so that people can hear the heartbeat behind every word that they utter and create a deeper human connection with every communication. So <clears throat> who all, have you helped some big names that some of us might recognize? Yes, you might recognize Nancy Matthews, international Yay. speaker, and Mitch Hume, God rest his soul. He's also an international professional speaker. Ernesto Verdugo, Mitch Carson, if, if James you, they say Dave Crane, Dave Crane from Tur the host of Turbocharger Brand TV, and the Carolina Cadillo from Univision. <laughs> I, I love when you when you have that the Spanish because you know people always accuse me of speaking very slowly and I'm thinking about wow in Spanish people speak so fast so think about a, like Tony Robbins for example a lot of people they watch him and they're like oh my god and he's been on the stage for what I don't know now 30 40 years I know at least if not longer than that what makes him such an incredible speaker who obviously can ignite the passions of thousands of people from all over the world. I, as a big name speaker, if you were to analyze him. Well, it's all about having that heart connection and he certainly has it. And that's been, I've seen his, his progress throughout, throughout the years and the, impact and how it has grown and it's all about having that deep connection with yourself and and how he has evolved as well that the more that you are in touch with your heart the more you're able to know yourself and understand yourself and the more you are able to empower others and he's been able to accomplish that and because of that he's been able to impact so many lives now the one thing I'll say about about Tony Robbins is that unfortunately there, there's something missing in the element that he's losing his voice. He's losing yes. his voice and it's because of the way that he's using his voice and there's another element where, that he also has other, other things happening physically that are affecting his voice and <laughs> at, at times I, I tell myself I wish that I had met him 10, 15 years ago so that I could help him with, with his voice because whatever he's doing right now is it, not, it's not working well for his voice because as a speaker, it doesn't make sense that you have a three-day event and by the second day, you're not able to speak because of the way that you're using your voice. So that's a good example for those of us who are just getting started or wanting to speak and like, yeah, I mean, think about it, a day, two days, three days, that's a, a lot of voice use and uh, without any training, I could see how you could easily uh, strain your voice or overuse it. So maybe do you have one or two tips that you might be able to give about how do you protect your voice when you are speaking? Well, first of all, screaming is probably one of the things, the worst things that you can do for your vocal cords. And, and I know it's all part of an exercise and there's a, lo a whole logic behind the, the exercise of screaming. I don't subscribe to anything that's going to physically hurt you. And screaming physically hurts you. So, there, I feel there are other ways to be able to tap into excitement and building up energy that is not going to be causing harm to your own body. And so that's one. The other part of it is also, it's all about placement. 
the voice placement, where you place your voice, is one of the most important things that you can learn as a speaker because most people speak from the center of their mouth, especially in the Western world. And what I mean by that is that it's similar to having a guitar and covering the mouth of a guitar. And this is what happens. You get a muffled sound. Oh, and, I heard that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, it's right. like this. I've got a it, it, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, exactly. So what happens, in order to compensate for that lack of projection, then what you end up doing is raising the volume of your voice so that people can hear you. But what you're doing, by doing so, you're expending a lot more energy and you're, co you're causing vocal strain by doing that. So that's why for a lot of people who speak from the center of their mouths, they feel so exhausted even after just an hour of speaking. I can and, see that. Yeah. And in the case of Tony Robbins, he speaks from the throat. So from the throat, what I mean by that, you can tell that someone speaks from the throat. Anytime that you have rasp in your voice like that, mm -hmm. you're speaking from the throat. And that's the worst placement you can have when speaking because by speaking from the throat, what you're doing is that you're causing irritation to your vocal cords. And the inflammation keeps growing and growing. And why, that's why you have people that have all these inflammations, they lose their voice after, like a, like a great example again, Tony Robbins. You have other people who, 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 who do that and over time they, they, they experience having nose and ha having to have an operation and in extreme circumstances they, they end up losing their voices completely. Wow. That, that's yeah. like with me, I, uh, recently I had a, a sore throat, you know, a scratchy throat. And what I noticed what happened as if I tried to talk for any length of time, at some point I would start coughing. And so I think I actually put out a call uh, on Facebook. What do you do for a sore throat? And it was really interesting because I had, I don't know, 20 people and every single person gave me a different remedy for the scratchy throat. So I'm going to ask you as a professional, what do you do, uh, number one, when you get that irritation in your throat and what should you do to stop the coughing attacks? Okay, so I have several things for you. Nope. There's one thing that I do every single night, but especially when you have a sore throat. I swear by the, these and I should buy the, uh, stock in them. <laughs> so it's called Brothers Pastilles. And it's Brothers, uh, Brothers Pastilles. Pastilles. And yeah, they're, they're an all natural blackberry pastilles which dissolve you you chew them or you you let it let it dissolve in your mouth you, you suck them and it it soothes whatever irritation you have going on in there so so that's one I always carry those with me and a lot of my voiceover colleagues also do that the other thing is when especially when you have a sore throat one of the things that I recommend is having a glass of warm water and mixing a tablespoon of salt in it and gargling, gargling that salt water. So you gargle for a little bit, spit it out. Gargle for a little bit, spit it out. Then, then do the whole glass. And after you do that, then you have a half teaspoonful of raw coconut oil and you swish it around in your mouth 
for at least 10, 15 minutes. And before you spit it out, you gargle it for a few seconds and spit it out. So what that does is that the, the coconut oil has healing properties. First, it's a disinfectant, and two, it lubricates your vocal instrument and soothes whatever inflammation you may have in there. And it's a form, this is what is also called oil pulling. So the oils, they pull whatever toxins are in your mouth, in your vocal instruments, in your vocal cord. And when you spit it out, then that all those toxins are, are absorbed by the, by the oil. And that's why it's called oil pulling. And then you, you, you just spit out the oil. And it's important not to swallow because then you're just swallowing the toxins. And plus, it, they, it's very fatty as well. <clears throat> oh, interesting, because my my mom used to always say gargle with salt water, <laughs> and, and actually I was listening to a doctor or a dentist, and she was talking about um, if you want to have um, a healthier mouth, she was actually saying exactly that about, about swishing the coconut oil in your mouth and gargling to pull out the toxins. And she was actually recommending that as a natural way to have, you know, a healthier teeth and gums as well as throat. So that makes perfect sense. So that's really good advice because I, I think a lot of people, they, you know, you get a sore throat, especially when you are speaking or talking. And for me, often, you know, the dust, you know, because I have fans and all this, so different things will irritate my throat. And then, of course, sometimes I'll talk all day long in interviews. So this is all really good information. So let's talk a little bit more about your magical powers because one of the things about you is, uh, and again, I was lucky enough um I, we were at an event, and on breaks, you would go play your guitar, and you would sing, and you wrote this beautiful song that you shared with the rest of us, and that was really, really a cool experience, you know, from my perspective, because who doesn't admire someone who can sing and write songs and who can control their voice in so many different ways for to me, that is so um, such a phenomenal, like you said, innate gift that you have. So what would you say that the, the main reasons that, what are people looking for when they come to you to work with you? What, what do they actually want and need? So most people who come to me, they want to feel powerful, and sound confident. Those are the main things. And, and to be heard. <laughs> so most people that come to me, they either have stage fright or are lacking confidence, and they have an interest in speaking on stage. What do you think and is the most important thing that they can learn to do as a stage speaker or a podcast speaker or speaker in general? Well, the first, the first part is how to breathe correctly. So one of the things that I teach all my clients is to breathe in through the mouth when speaking. We all learn to breathe a certain way However, what happens is most of us don't breathe correctly for, for speaking. And the, now let me rephrase it also that the natural way of breathing is in through the nose. However, what happens when, you, when you're having a conversation and you're breathing through the nose, so I'll give you an example. We're in the middle of a conversation and I'm going to breathe in through my nose. It takes a long time for me to fill up my lungs. Yeah. So it breaks the fluidity of the conversation. So that is one part. And it doesn't happen too often. It's actually more the exception than the rule. What happens more often than not is the contrary, where people are having a conversation, 
And, and I'll give you the example. Like right now, we're having a conversation, and I am taking lots of breaths. Of course, I'm exaggerating, but you get the point. It's because I am afraid of running out of breath, I am taking lots of shallow breaths so that I don't break the fluidity of the conversation. However, by taking a lot of shallow breaths, I am physically creating anxiety in my body. And then we wonder why there's such a, such a fear of public speaking. We're creating our own anxiety, and we're not even aware of it. Wow. Yes, I can. When you were starting to breathe like that, I was. It made me tense, <laughs> and, I, and and I knew it was a demo. But that it's and it also when people breathe like that, it makes you think they want you to hurry up. It, you know, like hurry it up, hurry it up. You know, you know, it makes you just feel um, anxious. You're at, yeah, because even when I did that a little bit, it made me feel um, anxiety. That's interesting. What about delivery with with voice inflection? I've heard some speakers that they have no voice inflection, so you can't tell if they're happy or sad. They're just spewing out information, and and it's kind of almost hypnotic in a sense that it's boring. Um, what do you think about that, and how do people um, – do you have any examples of – of um, people who just will bore you to death? Well, yes. I always like to refer to Professor Ben Stein in the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And <laughs> he's got absolutely no <laughs> inflection. It's like Bueller, Bueller, <laughs> anyone. <laughs> so... And so <laughs> It, it, and, it's, and it's funny, sure, it's very car, cartoon, cartoon, cartoonesque, but at the same time, I know people like this. I had a professor like this. <laughs> so, and I've seen speakers on stage do this. Now, what happens with, with that is that I've seen... I've seen people who they are very knowledgeable. They're experts in their fields. And they may be very passionate about their work, because, but because of the way that they're delivering their message, the passion isn't there. The, that you, you don't feel that, that passion. It's, it's not in the delivery. So what happens is that the message comes in one ear and out the other. People zone out. You don't create a, a, a connection to your audience. So it's, it's the difference between being informational and being transformational. So people who are able to connect with their emotions, and, and this is where I work with people, where I share with you the technique on how to tap into your heart, how to infuse your message with real emotion so that people can feel that passion that you have for your work and that you create that deeper connection with your audience to really create a deep in impact. And that's when you can transform people's lives. Yes. I would much rather be transformational than informational. I, I've spent a great deal of my life as a teacher and it's, and I know, you know, as a teacher, a lot of the time your idea is you're trying to give some, just give them a brain dump of information. But if you can't keep their attention, you know, they're going to be off fidgeting with their phones, the computer, you know, looking at their fingernails, you know, doing everything but listening. And actually, teachers want to be transformational, but... I'd say that most of the time that we're just informational. So as a voice coach, what would you say is some of the big misconceptions that people have about voice coaches? That all voice coaches are the same. That because they're maybe working with a singing coach, that the singing coach will be great for their speaking career. And, ah. and the thing is that while I will concede that there are techniques for singing that will help you for, 
your speaking. There are techniques that you apply for singing that will not help you as a speaker. I am a singer as well. There are certain things that I do when I'm singing that I will not do for speaking because if I were to do that, all of a sudden I will sound like this and that was not my natural sounding voice. <laughs> ah. but, but when I'm singing, I, am, I become a little more nasal because uh, there's a different way that you are expressing your sound in your voice. And if you were to apply the same techniques for the exact same techniques that you use for singing for, for speaking, then you would sound absolutely ridiculous. It's almost like you've been walking around speaking like a musical and everybody has something they sound nasal, <laughs> like they're pinching their noses or something. <laughs> That's really <laughs> interesting. I, I, well, number one, I don't sing. Um, I do speak. But that's very interesting because I would never think that there would be such a major difference in how you would tailor your voice for singing versus speaking. That That's really an intriguing thought um, about just that, that it's different and the nasal tones. I remember... Uh, Way, way back in with seventh grade, Mrs. Plummer, I wrote a play, and I wanted to narrate the play. I wrote it. She told someone, and I overheard it, that she didn't want me to read the play or narrate the play because my voice was too raspy, raspy, like a rasp. Uh -huh. And I'll uh, never forget that because it was one of those slaps in the faces of, you know, number one, um, uh, I don't, you know, I don't know why she thought that or why she would even say it to somebody else, but I overheard it and it, it made me afraid to speak for a long time. I've had many things in my life where when I was in the third grade, I had a chorus director tell me I couldn't sing so I didn't sing and then I had someone tell me my voice was too raspy I used to be terrified to speak because of all these perceived flaws but luckily today I realize that everybody has a voice and it's not about necessarily if it's uh, raspy or loud or or you know, we're just different. And with some training and coaching from someone who actually can help you learn how to breathe, you know, or like me, it's like I know that I probably don't um, speak from however because I've never had any training. And I would think that probably a lot of speakers, they just kind of fall into it or they have a desire to share a message and and they don't realize, gee, with a little bit of help, their message could become transformational instead of informational, which I think is such a huge, big deal. And that's why I'm really excited that you're sharing all this information with me. So if you, if somebody wants to work with you and they're like, Oh, Jean-Marc, I, I, I'd really like to do it, but oh, I'm just not ready. I'm sure you've heard that. What are the big excuses that people give you for not moving forward with their voice coaching? I would say, well, I'm not ready is a, is a big one, and, and I would ask, why not? What do you need to be ready? Because these are all excuses. These are all excuses. If you have a desire to speak and you have a desire to improve yourself, why not now? So, and then when, you, when I hear the argument, it's like, well, I don't have the money. Make the money. Because you need to invest in yourself. If you have a desire to do something, there is untapped potential. Wherever there is that desire, there is an untapped potential. So you have that potential, 
why not invest in yourself? And even if you can't, I, I, that's, this is why I have all these different programs where, yes, I offer the, the private coaching. However, I also offer workshops and I offer group training so that I can help more people in the process. If you can't, uh, uh, if you can't do the, the group training right away, I have a book, I have audio courses that, that you can get, at least get started with, with something and, and then find a way to be able to join one of the groups or just start in the process to help yourself. You obviously have a desire that you're having this conversation. So go ahead, empower yourself and invest in yourself. And so one is that I'm not ready. The other one I hear is, well, I already work with a vocal coach. And what I have to say with that, not all, not all, not all vocal coaches are the same. Most vocal coaches can, can teach you the breathing techniques and how to sound powerful, feel confident. Uh, any good vocal coach can teach you how to do that. Or even how to put in inflections in what you're saying. However, inflections won't do anything for you. For example, if you start speaking like this and putting inflections all over the place, <laughs> it, it becomes ridiculous. And, and, and I exaggerate in order to drive my point home that, yes, you need to have certain inflections to create this cadence and to engage your audience. But if you're just doing it willy-nilly and not being mindful about the way that you're doing it, then it doesn't make sense. You're, you're just being absolutely ridiculous and you're throwing your message in the wind. So wow. it's all about being mindful about the way that you're implementing your techniques and going beyond that, that if you want to really make an impact in people's lives, it goes beyond the technique that on how to sound and feel powerful and, and how do you use tonality and, and inflections in your voice, but how do you connect to your emotions? How do you connect to your heart on a consistent basis? And this is where I differentiate myself from any other person in the world, that I show you exactly how to do that. And, and actually, I'm going to share a little something with you that you're able to take home right away for you and your Yay. audience. So one way, and I'll share a little story about that before sharing the technique. Okay. So, so I was walking in my old neighborhood in Brooklyn, and I was just on my way back home, and all of a sudden I noticed a UPS truck that parks and a young man steps onto the sidewalk and he flings a soda can into the gutter. So I take a few steps, I stop, I take a deep breath, I turn around, walk towards a young man and I put my hand over my heart and I say, excuse me, I don't know if you live in this neighborhood, but I do. And I just saw you playing a soda can into the gutter. And there's a trash can right in that corner over there. I would really appreciate it if you would pick up that soda can and throw it in the trash can. And lo and behold, he picked up the soda can and threw it in the trash. Now, what I really wanted to say is like, hey, you jerk, pick up that soda can and throw it in the damn trash can. <laughs> However, the message would have not have been received because for every action is an equal and opposite reaction. So if I would have pushed with that aggression, he would have been a aggressive back. He would have called me some expletive or something. Yeah, you know, I would me. have. He was like, go take a walk by the lake. <laughs> so by, so what I did is that by, by breathing, first of all, I'm connecting with myself, with my center of my center of power. And by physically touching my heart, putting my hand over my heart, I am connecting to my heart. So no matter what comes out of my mouth, 
as I'm touching my heart, I will be coming from a place of love. Wow, so that's, that's beautiful. A way, thank you. Yeah, it's a, so that's a way I to be able I just put my hand on my heart, <laughs> and I said what I felt. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. So that's an easy way to reconnect to your heart as you're speaking. Anytime that you're facing a difficult situation, a difficult conversation, before opening your mouth to say the first word, take a deep breath, put your hand over your heart, and you will physically connect to your heart, and you will infuse that love into whatever it is that you say. There is no way for you to be physically touching your heart and to, to speak, and, and let's say that you're to sound harsh without hurting yourself, without physically hurting yourself. So just instinctively, instinctively you're not going to do that. By touching your heart, you're not going to want to hurt yourself. You're giving yourself love, and you're transmitting that love to whomever you're speaking with. Wow. I feel it. I can even feel my little, my heart, you know, the thump, 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 and, and I... And I'm thinking, wow, I'm going to start making sure that whenever I do my interviews, that I put my hand on my heart so that I'm connected in that transformational, loving way with anyone I do interviews with. Because obviously, I can do that in, you know, in front of my computer, and it, nobody would think it looked odd. <laughs> well, you can do it on stage also. It's just yes. a matter of... I mean, we do it all the time in conversation without even thinking about it. Just, this is just a mindful way. It, it's just creating this mindfulness in our bodies about the way that we use our bodies and by physically connecting it to our hearts. Like when we get a scare, it's, it's a natural reaction to automatically put your hand over your heart and go, <gasps> Oh, you're right. Wow. That's right. phenomenal. So we don't, yeah. So this is just a way of being mindful of what it is that we're doing and to go beyond to go beyond to physically tapping into your heart there's a lot of deeper work that needs to be done in order so let's say as a public speaker you're sharing your emotional story to take your audience on a journey and in order to really tap into those deep and difficult emotions there's a lot more work that needs to be done to be able to tap into that. It's not enough to just tap into to touch your heart in order to reach reach that memory and tap into those emotions. So that's a lot of deeper work that I do with my public speaking and acting clients. That we delve into that, we tap into memory, and I show you how to safely tap into those emotions, to tap in and to tap out of the emotion because you don't want to stay in that difficult emotion and carry that with you. You just want to be able to tap into it so that you can tap into the pain of whatever it is that your audience is seeking to resolve. And then take him on a journey and pivot into, hey, you, we, I feel your pain because I've been there and I was able to come out of it. I can show you how. I've been in your shoes. So once you, you've been able to share the heart of your story, that's when you really become transformational. Because what happens is that when you get on stage, people see you on stage, and it's almost like you're on a pedestal. It doesn't matter what you say. Well, <laughs> mm -hmm. up to a certain point. <laughs> well, well, I'm really Already excited that we had this conversation because I'm going to be speaking at Harvard later in the month and and I am going to be sharing a very personal emotional story about my mother who was a, a writer and how I became a publisher because of my mother and I have a you know a two-minute story and listening to you I'm thinking about how I will be able to convey um, that emotion, yet connect with the audience just by the tips that you've shared with me in the last few minutes. So that's really phenomenal. I really appreciate that. Oh, it's my pleasure. And, 
And if you need some extra support with that, I'll be happy to help you with that as well. <laughs> That's cool. So you have an audio course that available for our audience. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, so it's Voice It With Confidence. And what I do is that in, in this audio course, I walk you through different breathing exercises so that you tap into the full power of your voice and into, into your center of power and getting you ready to project. And I also walk you through some voice placement exercises so, so that you place your voice where you will command authority and presence and you will minimize the, the, the strain to your vocal cords. And you can feel powerful and sound confident every time that you speak. Wow. And where is that? Where can we get that? At powerupyourvoice.net. Powerupyourvoice.net. Wow, I like that. Voice it with confidence. So, Jean-Marc, is there anything that you want to leave the audience with besides all your phenomenal tips? I highly suggest, everyone, that you listen to this interview all the way through, and then you want to go back and listen to it again, because in the time that we've had with Jean-Marc, he's actually given us so many hot tips. He's talked about how to preserve our voice, you know, if you have a scratchy throat, all the way to how to connect your heart to your words and to be mindful as you do it. So this has just been one jam-packed uh, conversation with so many gold nuggets that you're going to have to, you know, go back, listen to it, and take really good notes. So is there anything that you'd like to sum it up with, Jean-Marc? Yes, absolutely. To always come from a place of love every time that you speak anytime that you have a conversation. And if we can all start doing this, that there will be no need for, for war. I mean, maybe I am an idealist, but this is all creating harmony between us. If we can create this state of being love at every moment with every conversation, with, with every person that we meet, that we can open up the space to get out of judgment and instead of spreading this hatred and prejudice, that there can be xenophilia, <laughs> that we can enjoy each other as we are, get to know each other, get to understand each other, and be able to have an open conversation and, and love each other just as we are, and to open the space for a healthy, loving conversation. That is phenomenal. Everyone, Jean-Marc Byrne is the author of the book, The Heart Voice Connection, How to Infuse Your Message with Real Emotion. And he specializes in showing public speakers, serious actors, and heart-centered entrepreneurs how to find their voices, save it from strain, so they can speak with ease, radiate more confidence, and evoke real emotion with every conversation, thus creating more sales for their respective businesses. Thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure and part of my purpose. This is Tammy Patzer. Go make it a beautiful day. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.